Whoa, that is a pull. Wow, they said they had a pull on the highway. I thought it was just a drift. No, they're talking about the pull. Sometimes people confuse the long drive drift, which would be when you let go of the wheel in a safe area and it slowly drifts off. That would be normal. That's with the road grade. And you can always go to the left side, the fast lane with no cars around, and do the same thing. And if you let go slightly and it just slowly drifts that way, that's the grain of the road. That's where the water runs off. But this thing definitely has a pull. Let's go back to the shop and check it out. So now that we're back in the shop, and the car's on the lift. I got so much to show you and talk to you about why the car would pull. Right now though, I have an old tie rod end assembly. I got an inner and an outer here. They come apart and they do get sold separately actually at 1AAuto.com or you can buy as a kit. I buy everything as a kit only because me, hmm, I've done this a thousand times. Once you take that outer off, these threads are worn out or rusted. To go to do the alignment, what a nightmare. It's nicer to have fresh and fresh you know it's all new and don't have to deal with it. But I can show you right here how bad, look at that's effortlessly for me, nothing to do that. And the boot's torn, so that was an indication too that this was bad. I wanna physically show you on a car parts that we need to look for in the suspension and steering that can cause a actual pull and maybe even a shorter drift, not such a long drift, but a shorter drift. Like I showed you on the highway, the difference between a pull and a drift. So first thing you always want to do is tire pressure. It's number one. So one, one, it's number one. And if you look at this tire, well, it tells a story in itself. This thing has run flat. See how the letters on the brand are getting worn out? And it looks like dirt or mud, but if you look real close, you can see the actual word for touring is actually it's grooved out. So this tire has had an air leak for quite a while. And that's going to cause a drift or a pull. It's going to cause more of a pull than a drift. Unless it's just a little bit of loss pressure, but massive pressure that you can't physically see with your eye, it will drift and, I mean, will pull severely. But let's talk about suspension. You can have a frozen tie rod in or a loose tie rod in. Frozen tie rod in, when I turn this like this, you might actually hear a squeaking sound. It might make a sound when it goes, ah, ah, and that could be a frozen tie rod in, which I always point to my elbow because that's what it looks like. A loose tie rod end is kind of like a steering box that when you turn, I don't know how old you are, but back in the day, I always say that, but back in the day when we had big metal cars or trucks, like big cars, like your mother's station wagon, remember those Chevy station wagons with the paneling on the side? And the steering wheel was like this thin and it was hard plastic and you'd be going straight down the road and your mother would be driving the car or your father and they'd always be like trying to correct the steering, even though you're going straight. That had a steering box in it. It would have play in it. Now we don't have steering boxes anymore. We have power steering racks. But a loose tie rod end is gonna do the same thing. You're gonna feel like you can't ever find center and it's gonna feel like it's kind of washy. So you wanna check your front end out. Quickly, get a jack, jack it up. This is front wheel drive, well it's all wheel drive. So I don't have a steering box, I have a power steering rack, but I have a spring and strut here. So I don't need to put the jack directly under the control arm. I could jack it up over here like I'm doing a tire. So at home you can jack it with the car jack and you just want to grab your tire at what I call three and nine and you just want to go like this real gently. I've showed you this before. You want to make sure that steering wheel is moving. If it's not moving and the tire is moving, then you have a tire end problem. Let's look at closer look at that. This is the inner and this is the outer tire end. That's what we call a jam nut. And that goes into the steering rack. And here I have a whole new assembly, what we call an assembly, from 1AAuto.com. And I get to install this later. This is the inner tie rod end, and that's the outer. This is what they call a jam nut. And this threads right into the power steering rack. And how it works is this is the inner tie rod end. And when that gets play, it will just kind of like go in and out like a plunger. You can't physically see it, though, because of the, what we have here is a bellow boot. Wraps around the power steering rack and covers this piece, because this will be packed with grease when you install one. And then your outer tie rod end, what I always reference to, like your elbow, right? So this will pivot when you turn your steering wheel and just like your joint. This will freeze up sometimes. These freeze up and that will cause a drift or a pull on a grade of a highway or a back road. But when this is loose and it wobbles around and has play in it, you're constantly chasing it when you're driving your car. You're going into it, then going back, going in it, going back. That's how you diagnose one when you're driving. 
So I brought you here so you can see the different types of grade that roads have. Well, this isn't a road, it's a racetrack. But what you deal with daily on the highway is only 3% grade. Let me show you. So I picked this desolate highway so I can actually show you the pitch of the road and why the rain runs off it. You don't physically see it all the time, but it's there. So like I said before, the grade of the road is a 3% grade for water runoff, whether it's left or right. So the road actually has a peak in the center. So if you're going down the road and you feel your car slowly drift to the right, that's normal. But if you feel your car pulling to the right and you have to hold it back from going off, that's not normal. Let me demonstrate with the ball. See the seconds it took for that to come back? Because of the grade. We always overlook suspension in the rear. Sometimes it's more complicated than the front. You have upper control arms, lower radius arms, you have lateral arms, all these radius bushings, and rubber bushings are one of the biggest causes of conditions other than accidents. Sometimes you get in a little front fender bender and you don't realize that something bent a trailing arm in the back or a radius arm. That should be done with an alignment machine if you can't visually do it. But if you feel like you have that swaying that I'm talking about and your front end checks out tight, go to the back of the car. Let's look at the suspension and the steering, if it has steering in the back. Some tie rod ends exist in the back, but they're not connected to a, ra a rack. They're actually just adjustable for caster and camber to go in and out. This doesn't have any tie rod ends, but I have tons of radius arms and sway bar, which is just kind of a junking, bouncing movement, but this radius arm comes out, and I've got a worn bushing here. It's dry rotted and cracked. The car has got some age to it, but I can't find any play. So what I'm saying, if you feel like you have this kind of problem, you want to diagnose it yourself, I strongly recommend it because it makes you feel really good about yourself. Do a little mystery. I like mysteries. Jack the car up or truck, put good support underneath, and take wheels off both sides. Compare your bushings and the alignments of control arms, radius arms, trailing arms, and check out how the angles of the bushings are. If you find one that's smacked up against the metal, you might even have a noise and you solve that mystery, right? Don't forget to check body mounts. These are notorious for breaking down fast because especially up here in New England or anywhere that you have salt on the road, that sits inside those bushings and boy, does horrible things to the arteries, does horrible things to rubber too. So check that out and then you know, hey, I solved it myself. Get the parts, stall it, do it yourself and then just get a proper alignment always get a four wheel alignment. No, they're not kind of ripping you off when they say, oh, I have to do four wheel alignment. Two wheel alignments, even on trucks, the differential can be shifted due to bumpy back roads and you want the heads on the wheels to tell you if you're dog tailing. So pay the extra little bucks and get a true story of what's going on with your vehicle. So thanks for going on this little journey with me about drifting and pulling. Now, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell because then it turns on all your notifications and you won't miss any future videos.